welcome to this week's learning webinar. My name is Chantelle, and I'm going to be your host today as we look at remodel design. We'll look at building a model with the intention of it being a remodel so that you have new and existing and demolished work. We'll look at how the appearance of those items We'll look at also the quantification of those items as well, so that when we're remodeling something, we know that we only want to quantify the new construction. Following the entire presentation, we'll look at the chat panel where you can type in any questions that you might have about remodel design, and I'll be able to answer those live during this broadcast. Following the entire presentation, I will email you out a booklet so that you can read about all the different information that I presented today as well. So let's get started and look at remodel design. When we're drawing a project, and I'm gonna click on walls to begin with, we wanna make sure that we show the project in what is new and what existing and what is demolished for all the different components of our project. So when we're looking at walls, if I scroll through the catalog panel here on the right, you'll notice down at the bottom, folder, we have a custom folder. And this is the default catalog that comes with CAD Soft and Visioneer. So when I'm looking at this custom folder, you'll see two things at the very bottom. There's a demolish wall and an existing wall. I'm going to double click on the demolish wall to bring up its property so we can see what the information behind it and what makes it a demolish wall compared to any other wall that's in our catalog. When we're looking at this demolish wall, we can see first off that underneath this basic tab, it's been set to a general wall type. When a wall is at a general wall type, you'll notice a couple of things. One, the wall itself, if I'm looking at um, the bottom part here, the framing member, you can see that that's grayed out. So this wall will not frame. So I'll have no framing components composed of it. So I don't have to worry about adding up all of the um, top plates, bottom plates, studs in this wall and erasing them out later. It's just not framed. So when you're doing any kind of existing wall or wall that's going to be demolished, a wall where you don't want to count the framing for it, make sure you select the general wall type for that particular wall and it won't frame and you won't have to count all of the different uh, framing items for it. Then. Um, also with this type of wall, um, I'm gonna go to the trim tab, and you'll notice our de demolished wall has no trim selected. There's none selected for any of the interior surface, the right side of the wall, or the exterior side of the wall. Again, that's for quantification purposes. If it's in this list, it's going to quantify. So we wanna make sure that we don't quantify any materials as part of our demolish or our existing walls. So they'll be set to none selected for all the trim elements as well. Next, we go to the appearance tab. When we're looking at this wall, we wanna make sure that it appears differently, both in 3D and then we'll look at the 2D line work that's associated to it as well. So Looking at the components list on the left, we can see the exterior surface is common glass. I've set it to glass in the catalog so that when we're drawing a project that's going to be demolished, I still want to see where it was in 3D. So if I'm looking and I'm showing a project to a client and I'm gonna take down a wall and I'm showing them the new outline of that space, if you have this lightly ghosted glass wall in there of this is where that wall was, they can still see through it, but they get that common glass, that kind of a gray haze to it to say, ah, I know where that wall was. Oh my goodness, we have such better sight lines now without that wall. So I set it to a material called common glass so we can still see through it um, and we can still see that it was there. And that's for all of the different components of that wall itself. They're all set to glass, so when it's in 3D, we can see it. If I look at the line work associated to a demolished wall, we can put this on its own unique layer so that the line work will look different. So I'm going to um, create a new layer 
um, called Demolish that we'll put this to. So I'm going to click here on this little button beside the layer name walls, and that'll allow me to select a new layer. So when we're looking through the list here, we, you can see all the different layers and how everything's going to go on its own unique layer. In this list, we'll see one that's called Walls Demolish. The color is green, which is different than our walls layer, which is blue. The line type is dash dot, and you can see that the line weight is very light. So a distinct difference in how this line work of this demolished wall is going to appear. It's going to be very light, it's going to be dash dot, and it's going to be green. So I'll click OK. And now the exterior surface has been set to demolish. I'm going to hold down my shift key and select everything else in that list and make sure all of those as well are going to go to the walls demolished layer. So now everything is going to go onto that walls demolished layer. Um, so those items, when we're looking at them, will have that distinct layer set to them so that they'll appear differently for us as well. When we go to the quantity tab of this demolished wall, we don't want it to quantify. So down at the very bottom of this dialog box, you'll see that there is an option to include in quantities. If there's a check mark in this box, that means it's going to quantify. If I remove the check mark, then it's not going to quantify. So the demolished wall in the default catalog doesn't have a check mark. It's not going to appear in your quantity list. If you wanted it to just to get the square footage or linear footage of that wall, you can have demolish wall appear in the list, especially if you want to put a price to that. So for whatever linear footage of wall you're going to demolish, you're going to charge X amount of dollars. You could have demolish wall appear in that quantity list and give you a linear footage or a square footage um, value to it. So to recap, what makes this demolished wall different from any other wall in the catalog? A, it's not going to quantify. We have unchecked that, it's unchecked, therefore it's not going to be included in the quantities. The line work is putting itself on a distinct layer called walls demolish, and that will give it a green color that will give it a dash dot line type, and it'll be a very light line. In the 3D appearance of this wall, it's gonna go look like common glass, so that we'll be able to see through it where it was, so that we've got that kind of structure there, so um, when you're looking in 3D, you've got that reference of where that wall was before you took it down. Under the trim tab, We've deleted out any reference of trim on all the different sides of the wall so they don't quantify. And under our basic tab, we've made sure that it's set to general because a general wall, if we look down here at the bottom, doesn't have any framing numbers associated to it. So it's not going to frame. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit okay there. If I double click on the wall that's below it called existing wall, You'll notice that it has a lot of the same characteristics as our demolish wall. It's a general wall. It's not going to have any trim on any faces of the wall associated to it, so they won't quantify. But in appearance, it's going to um, look a little different. Because this is an existing wall, we'll want to make sure that it shows up in 3D with the materials that are existing. So here you can see I've just given it a starting texture of siding number 23. But this is the component, that exterior surface and the interior and right interior surfaces, where you're gonna to wanna to match that existing house. So when you go on site and you notice that maybe it's red brick to begin with, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the material in here by selecting on it points to that red brick. When you're looking at these materials, always remember that these materials are just JPEGs. So if you are on site and want to show what that existing material is going to look like, this is where you link it up. When I'm in this materials catalog, 
I can right click in here and say, add a material. That'll bring up a dialog box and you can see it's quite different now in version 13. We've got a lot more controls, but the same default um, option is here that we have um, the ability to show it the texture that we're going to be using. So when I go for the texture here, it allows me, gives me the select button that's going to look out on my hard drive for a JPEG. So if you go even with your smartphone, out on site, take a picture of the wall texture, you can feed it in. Now look at our textures, just a small sample of the texture, straight on shot. Make sure there's no shades or shadows because if that shade and shadow is casting on here, what we do with the texture shot that you take, that picture, is we repeat it along the wall. So when we're repeating it along the wall, if there is a shade or shadow or some dirt or residue on that portion of the wall, it gets copied all the way through. And that's when it starts to look unrealistic. So make sure if you are going to bring in a picture of a texture of a wall or a flooring material, make sure it's a straight on shot and make sure it's a clean um, portion of that wall or floor. Okay, and then you just point to it and it'll show you a preview here. And then you give it a name up at the top. So you could call it new texture, click okay. And then I've got new texture in my catalog as well. Okay, so this is your opportunity when you're dealing with existing walls to come in here and change that material to the exact material that is on site um, that they're using for that wall. As far as line work, you want to make sure that you have a distinct difference between existing, new, and demolish. We already saw that we set our demolished walls to be a demolish layer, which made them green, which made them dash dot, and which made them very light. Now with our existing walls, you can also see that they have a distinct layer as well, and it's called a walls existing. And if I click on this little button here, it'll take me out to the catalog of layers where I can see that the existing wall layer is a very light gray color. It's still a continuous wall. It's not broken up to show that it's being demolished. It's a continuous line type, a straight line. But I can also see that it's very light. So when I'm looking on my floor plan, if I'm looking at a very light gray line, I know that that's going to be an existing wall. If I, it's a green dash dot line, I know it's one that's going to be demolished. And if the other walls, my normal walls are blue and continuous, then I know that they're going to be my new wall construction. Okay, so the 2D appearance here under line weight, you can pick a layer and change all of those settings so that it's calling on the wall colors, line types, and styles that you want them to be. Again, under the quantity tab, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this existing wall doesn't quantify. So down at the bottom again, under include and quantities, you'll see that it's unchecked because if it was checked, that means I'm going to see existing wall in my material report. But if I uncheck that, it doesn't show up at all. Okay, so those are the different two different walls that are in our catalog to help get you started. But again, they're there for your reference. So if there is an existing wall project that you're working on that has, um, a different material, um, or you want to show it with a different line type, you can use these to get yourself started to build new walls into the catalog. So I'm going to grab this existing wall, move my cursor out onto my drawing space, and I'm going to right click. And I'm going to tell it that I want to um, insert by a baseline. So I'm going to left click here to get started. And I've been on site. I know my existing measurements. The first wall line is 22 feet. And you can see at the bottom of my screen, distance 20 feet, 22 feet, direction is zero degrees. Zero degrees is traveling to the right of my screen. You'll notice if I pull up 
that becomes 90 degrees. If I pull to the left, it's 180. And if I pull down, it's 270. So my distance is 22 feet. My direction is zero to the right. I hit enter. And that creates that first line um, representing one wall of my existing house. I pull up, I type five feet, hit enter. I pull to the right, I type 10 feet, hit enter. I pull down, I type five feet, hit enter. I pull to the right, 15 feet. And I would just repeat this process for all of the existing wall lines of the house that I've measured on site. So I'm gonna come back 20 feet, and then I'm gonna pull my cursor over the full 47 feet to bring myself back to where the end of this house would be. So 47 feet, enter, and then I right click and I hit finish. So I've just outlined the existing house using that existing wall for my catalog. I've typed in all of the exact dimensions that I took on site. When I right clicked and I told it I was finished, now I have to tell it those dimensions that I typed in, that 20 feet, that 27 feet, what were they all in reference to? Were they referencing the outside of the veneer, my siding? Were they a stud wall position? Or did I take those on the inside face of the wall? So you have this um, ability to type in those dimensions and then reference what you were, where you actually measured them from. So if you could only get into the inside of a building, um, you could type in all the inside dimensions and use inner wall or to the outside. I click OK, and it takes all of those walls and those measurements and puts them into my existing wall. You can see as I hover my cursor over these walls, they know that they're existing walls. And from what we looked at in the catalog, we know that those existing walls um, aren't going to quantify. They're going to look different in 2D. You can see the line work is very light and it's gray and there's no trim associated to them. If I go now and find a new wall, so we're gonna put in a new addition out front here, I'll tell it that I want two by six and I want it to be stone. So that when I start drawing this new addition now at the front, we'll see that those walls are going to look different. I'm gonna tell it that I want to enter an insertion offset and I wanna come five feet away from this corner. So the new addition starts five feet away from this corner. I left click. I pull down that I'm going to come down 10 feet, that I'm going to go over uh, 25 feet, and then I'm going to come up and left click here. And that's our new addition right in here. If I look at this in 3D, because this is new, and existing, we can see our new stone walls and our existing walls have the siding on it so that they appear correctly in 3D. What I'd also like to do while I'm out here is we wanna get rid of these walls now. They were part of our original structure, but we wanna get rid of them. So I'm going to left click to select one of them and then holding down my shift key, I'm going to select the other ones that are going to be demolished in our new um, build. Once I've got them selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose replace. I want to replace those with the demolished wall that's in our catalog. When I click OK, you'll notice that they become that lightly ghosted wall that I can still see through. And when I put them into 2D, they take on the line work that was um, associated to that demolished wall. These demolished walls and these existing walls, remember, won't quantify and they won't frame. So if I put this again into a 3D view and go up to view framing, display the framing, you can see they disappear. There's no framing associated to them. The only framing that I'm going to see and the only framing that I'm going to quantify is part of that two by six stone wall, that new construction that I've built. Everything else 
is existing or demolished, and I don't want to quantify them, and I don't want to see it. Back up to View, Framing, Display All But the Framing, and I'll get those other walls back in. So we can see a distinct difference between new, existing, and demolished walls, both in 2D, 3D, in framing, and if I go up to Tools, Analyze, Generate a Project Estimate, we'll notice that the values that I'm seeing here for a house that was 47 feet long in its original um, existing, I would have many more uh, pieces of plate material and more studs than 44 studs. This is only the material that I'm going to need for those three new walls that I've built. So our quantity information is going to be reflective as well. When we're putting in other elements, you can do the same thing. So when I'm grabbing windows, and I'll put some windows out in our new construction here, if I put that same window back here, because I want to see what it's going to look like in 3D, um, my clients, because this is a new addition, want to make sure that everything still looks okay. This window, however, I don't want to quantify. I want it to be the same look as my new windows because I want the whole design to match, but this one already exists. I don't want it to quantify. So I put it in just as I put the other ones in, but then I select those windows that are existing, and then I right click and I look at their properties. Under their properties, I'm going to go to um, the quantity tab and uncheck including quantities. When I click OK, I'll still see that window, but it won't quantify. I should only have in my quantity report three windows. This window won't exist in the quantities because I did so. So by going back up to Tools and Analyze and Generate a Project Estimate, if I scroll through our, our list and look at um, the windows, exterior openings, and I'll just expand this so we can see this a little bit better, you can see that there's only three. The other window is ignored because I unchecked the quantity information. I can still see it because I want to see it in 3D to make sure that it matches in with the new and the existing, so there's not going to be a, a mashup of design, um, but it's not going to quantify. So it's just for design purposes that it's there. It has no other value to it. And because it's sitting in a wall that has no trim and a wall that has no framing, it's not going to be framed around and there's no trim that's going to go around it either. Okay. Um, doors would be the exact same thing. Put your doors in wherever they're going to exist. And if they existed in part of the um, existing structure, um, you're going to select them, right click, look at their properties, go to that quantity tab, and say don't include in, in, in the quantities. Now, if this is a door, and I'm going to grab a door here that maybe existed right here, that we want to show as part of the demolish process as well, we can look at its properties, make sure that it doesn't quantify, and then look at its line work. And for its line work, I'm going to select all of the items here. Um, we can put it on the same layer as the walls demolish so that it takes on those same properties. It's very light, it's dashed dot, it's green. If we turn off that layer in our working drawings, this window or this door will also disappear. So out in um, our plan, you can see it takes on that same appearance in 2D. So it's there, but it's also taking on the same properties. If I look at the appearance page here, we can again grab everything here in the components list, go to our materials, and I'm going to go down to glass, um, glass and mirrors here, go to our common glass, click OK. So it's got that gray appearance to it as well, and OK. 
And if I place a camera in our existing, we'll be able to see where that was. So our clients can visualize past the space, but they can still see where things were. So they get a good perspective on what a difference it's going to make not to have those walls in that area and how it's going to open up the entire space for them. Okay, so you've got that, that power of showing those, those different types. As far as the roof is concerned, I'm going to put a roof on the entire perimeter and it sees our existing as a perimeter. So you can see when I move my cursor in there, it sees it as one big piece. So when I left click in here, I've got the entire house. The roof is on over everything. The roof is one structure when we're looking at the quantity information. So when I'm looking at the quantity of this roof, I can't, I'm not looking at the individual sections of the roof, I'm looking at the entire roof. So both the existing and what's over our new structure. The way that I can handle only quantifying this portion of the roof, the new build, is by selecting the roof right clicking and then you'll notice we have convert roof to surfaces and I'll change it to a roof surface here called asphalt shingles. Now the roof is individual sections so if I take the sections over the existing roof I'm just selecting them and look at their properties I can tell it that I don't want the, it to be included in the quantities, and I can remove all of the um, assemblies that are associated to this surface so that nothing about it is going to quantify. So it's going to remove any quantification. If I look at the specify framing, where it says, yes, I want this to frame, I'm going to say, no, I don't want this to frame. And by changing this to no, I don't want it to frame, these sections of the roof and these portions will no longer frame. So the only portions that are left to frame are the portions that are over top of my new structure. So it's not going to frame and it's not going to quantify. So these sections here, looking at their properties, don't quantify and they don't frame. But my new sections, the ones down here over my new build, if I look at their properties, they do quantify. They do have assembled options. They do have framing, yes, associated to them. So I'll be able to see the rafters associated to the ridge beam here, the valleys, all in my quantity report. So if I expand this out so we can see it, I've got 16 rafters that are 14 foot long. So you can see all of the different materials, but all of these are just the pieces that are over my new structure, not the existing. My roof fi finishes, um, all of that again, just on that new section. And of course, when you're in 3D, you want it to appear the same. Your clients wanna see what it's going to look like as a total finish to make sure that this new, build that you're creating for them blends in nicely to the existing. Um, if they wanted to, as part of this whole structure, the existing part to just reshingle it, you can do that. I can look at the properties of just this portion of the roof and under quantities, tell it that I want to add in just the shingles. So I just want cap, shingles, shingle starter, and roof nails. That's all I want. They're gonna re-shingle the existing, and it's an entirely new structure over the, the new part, so I'm going to be getting my sheathing and my rafters, but this part, I just want it to have the, the surface. I can tell it to replace it, include it, and this is all I want to, to quantify. So things like that you can do. You don't want new sheathing, you just want the shingles, of the new, um, the existing, that can be done as well. Lots we covered today so far on looking at the model and when we're creating a remodel project, how to quantify, 
and how to make the appearance of new existing and demolished elements um, appear. When we take this entire portion then and send it out to our working drawings, you might want to do a couple of different things. One, I'm going to go to Tools, Dimensions, Auto Exterior, the Dimensions. You might want to dimension the entire plan. But with that being said, you might not need the existing. So for example, I could get rid of this overall dimension. I select it and I'm just hitting delete. So the one the dimensions I don't need, I can just delete out. I don't need them at the back of the house here. I just need reference to the existing structure here and everything else can disappear. So when I'm looking at the overall design, it's really just in on the new portion of it. Um, when I'm looking at um, things like elevations, I'm gonna look at this stone wall. When I'm looking at this stone wall and its line work, you can see that it's got a hatch pattern associated to it. It's got a cultured stone hatch pattern and it's put on this walls layer, um, but it could be a different unique layer as well. And if I look at the existing structure and its line work, you can see there's no hatch pattern associated to it. So we're only going to hatch pattern the new structure. So it makes it more defined and we can tell that something's different about those other walls in our working drawings. So I'm gonna go here to one floor plan. I'm gonna come up and define a smart view. Here's my floor plan, my new, my existing, my demolish. Again, I can um, turn off the visibility of anything I wouldn't want to see at this point. So if I do wanna turn off my roof, maybe turn off my terrain, I can turn off those different elements. Just click OK and they'll disappear. So I've got a clean floor plan. And then I just hit insert. And a copy of that floor plan is now in there. And just by the line work itself, you can see the distinct difference. It's going to print that way as well. Because we gave it that layer property of very light, those gray lines and those green lines are going to be very light when they print. Whereas our new structure, has a darker line weight to it. So it's going to print darker. So it'll um, grab the eye to that section so you know that that's your new, new um, section. And then in here, we can go to text, text, and we can type in, um, I'll just put in a uh, notes here, and I'll just type in new addition and insert that into our new addition area so that they know that that's a note about just this area and they know what to look for there. As far as the elevations, when I define a smart view, go to my front elevation, just gonna zoom out on it. When we're looking at it, if I put that into a pattern view, you can see that the hatch pattern is only on our new addition. There's no hatch pattern on the existing house. And when I insert that into the drawing, we can see how that really pops that just that one area. So we can see that it's the new structure and this back here is existing. It's distinct, it's different. Let's recap everything that we've covered so far. Some of you came in a little late and might not have saw the first part of the webinar. And I wanna make sure everybody understands everything that we've covered before I go into the questions and answers. We started off today by drawing the project's walls. And there's a folder in the Envisioneer 13 catalog that's called Custom. And under that Custom folder, there's two different walls that we looked at today. There's a demolished wall and there's an existing wall. What makes these two walls different than any other wall in the catalog is one, they're set to a general wall, so they don't frame, and therefore we don't quantify any framing information. Two, there's no trim associated to these walls. So again, we don't quantify or see trim. Three, their appearance can be different. So as far as the um, demolished wall is concerned, the appearance looks like a glass wall. So when we're in 3D, we can see where it was, um, but we don't, we can see through it. 
And for the existing walls, we talked about the material. Go on site, take a picture of the existing materials, click here on the material for I'm on ex exterior surface, right click in and add a new material. When you click add new material, you're going to be telling it that you're creating a new texture. And that texture, you can go out and select it to be the picture that you took on site. A good front-on view of the material that's nice and clean. The other difference is the line work. When we're looking at 2D at these elements, the existing wall and the demolished wall, we want to make sure that they appear differently so that our eye can distinctly see that these walls are different than the new construction. So for our existing walls, they're on a layer called existing. And you can see that this wall's existing layer is going to color the lines gray, it's going to make them a continuous line type, and it's going to make them very light. Our walls demolish are going to be green, dashed dot, and very light. Whereas all the other walls, our new structure, they're going to be blue, they're going to be continuous, and they're going to be light. So they're going to print darker, and they're going to look visually different on our screen so our eyes can instantly tell there's something different about them. The last distant, uh, difference between these existing and demolished walls from any other wall is they're not included in the quantities. So they're not going to quantify any of the materials that are associated to them either. So they're just there for presentation purposes so we can see where the existing structure was. We then talked about um, adding in windows and doors. And when we do, the windows and doors that we put into an existing wall that are going to stay, what we did was we just changed their quantity information. We just told it that we don't want to include those in the quantities. We want them to appear the same if they're going to remain, so we didn't change anything else about them. Whereas this door in this demolished wall that we're going to be demolishing, we wanted it to appear differently and we didn't want it to quantify. So we went to the appearance tab and made all the components of that door look like common glass so we can see through it. We also took the line work and made sure that they're all on that walls demolished layer so they appear like the walls that they're in. And then we went to the quantity tab and we told it we didn't want to include any of it in the quantities. When it's not included in the quantities, it won't include any of the assembled items, but if you feel um, you want to see those out of there, you can also remove those as well. Then we talked about the roof. When we put a roof on by perimeter, it's going to look at both the existing structure and our new addition. And if it goes over that entire area, it's going to put one big roof on. When that roof goes on, the properties about framing that roof, the properties of the quantities of that roof, deal with the entire roof structure. So when we want to be able to uh, put the roof on and then um, just quantify sections, that's when we converted it to individual surfaces in our right click menu. Now each individual surface can be different materials. They can be included in the quantities or not. They can frame or not. So when we look in 3D at our model and go to view framing, display framing, the only section or home that's going to frame is our new structure. The other parts of it aren't going to quantify because we told them not to quantify and we told them not to frame. When we're creating, um, after that, all of our working drawings for this building, we ran the entire dimensions around um, using the auto exterior dimensions. And then I just deleted out the ones that pertain to the existing structure because I really just wanted to mention my new structure. We then inserted them onto our working drawing sheets. And when we did that, we also noticed that our elevations are only going to hatch the new areas because that's one of the properties of our existing versus new walls. The existing walls don't have hatch patterns associated to them. So they lose that distinction in the elevations. So our eye is drawn to just our new addition. Lots of information today.
I'm going to go to our chat panel now and answer any questions you might have about any of that information that I covered for you today. So if you do have any questions, make sure you take advantage of this time and type any questions that you have about remodel. So I'm going to look at our first question. In the building locations, do I type for first floor existing first floor? Then for addition, go to add a location and type in new first floor addition. Will this work or be confusing? Okay, so the question is, should I distinguish new versus um, existing by putting them on an entirely different location? My personal preference is no, don't do that. The reason I say that, and I'll show you why, I'm gonna come up here to settings, building locations, I'm going to add a location um, from the existing location, and I'm gonna call it a new addition. And I'm just gonna click okay, and I want it to be um, the same values here, one foot five and a half inch. Um, so I want it to be the same level as our ground floor. So I made sure the floor level is the same. It's just a different addition. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to select these walls. And I'm going to move them to that new addition location. So with those selected, I right click and I say um, duplicate to a location called new addition. And yes, delete out the existing. So now see how on this floor plan, they're gone. I don't see them. And on my new addition, I only have those walls. It kind of becomes a little messy because then you don't have them showing at the same time. I like to be able to see them at the same time. And also because they're not on the same location, notice how my new walls don't show the veneer any longer. I can get that back. Um, I can select these walls and um, look at their properties and tell it that on the left surface, make sure that it's still exterior so that veneer shows back up. But I find that the connection is not going to be as nice now. If I go to my working drawings now here and tell it to um, redefine the settings here and to show all of my locations perfect and hit update see how they don't quite connect in as nicely anymore you can see that line butt up that's might might be what you're looking for that might be yes that's perfect that's what I want then then by all means put them on a separate location I like to show the walls connecting differently I like to have them all on the same location so I can work on them together. But if you don't and you prefer having them on a different location, by all means do that. Um, that might work better for you, uh, having them on a different location. I just as a personal preference, I can show the difference between new and existing by my line types. So that when I'm looking at my ground floor here, it's very obvious to me that that's existing, that's demolished. And then if I move these back, this new addition wall, select all similar, and uh, duplicate them back down to the ground floor, delete these ones. For me, I can see the difference. I got clean intersections there. I think that would work better. Um, but by all means, if you would rather have them on a different location so that you can turn them on and off, go ahead and do that. That'll work as well. I hope I was able to illustrate both methods for you there. Okay, next question. In the worksheet elevation view, I don't see the hip roof showing the hip lines. The hip roof showing the hip lines. Let me zoom back out. Oh, it's because it's covered up by the hatch pattern. If I get in there and zoom in closer, you can see the, the, the lines coming through. It's just because we were zoomed out so far. Um, 
that you don't see them. So if I'm in my worksheets here, if I zoom in, I can see those hip lines, but because we were zoomed out so far, that's why you don't see them. It's just a visual thing um, on my computer screen, but the hip lines are, are definitely in there. Okay. That seems to be our only question so far today. Um, so I'm going to keep that chat panel open for one further minute, and just in case anyone else has a question. But I am sending you a document as well. So you can read about all of the different settings that we went over today um, and try them out yourself. Draw a little project just like I did so you become comfortable with the methods that we went over, drawing those existing walls, drawing the demolished walls, putting in new ones. Test out if you prefer to have them on different locations or not, or if you prefer to have everything on one. Um, totally up to you. That's why. Envisioneer is kind of flexible that way. If you like to have them on your own unique layer, great, do that. If you prefer not to, it works too, and you can just show them visibly different, um, even on the same location. So I'll just check back, see if there's any other questions. There doesn't seem to be. Okay, everyone, I want to thank you for joining me for today's class. I hope you learned about remodel design and you can use it in your work. And I look forward to seeing everybody in next week's class as well. Thanks everybody, have a fantastic week, bye-bye.